my King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy, so bright heaven's song. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Still be my vision, O ruler of all. When I finished college, I came back to the Oxford Hills area and immediately began working with the youth group at our church. We were working at developing a philosophy of youth ministry that focused on the idea that we were not going to just simply entertain the teenagers. We were going to train them to serve God, to serve the church, and to serve those in need. And so you would more likely find us doing things like shoveling snow and raking lawns and doing firewood for shut-ins than you would find us doing movie nights and bowling nights, although we did do those things as well. In addition to all of this, we also started three ministry teams. We had a a music group, a teen choir. We had a drama group, and we had a puppet team. Now, Nathan was eager to be involved in what we were doing, and he started out right off working with the drama team and working with the music group. And I appreciated having Nathan there, although I did have one problem with Nathan, and that was... To be frank, he could not carry a tune in a bucket, which was a struggle for me because I was a bit of a perfectionist, perhaps too much of a perfectionist, and I struggled knowing what to do about this because I did not want to discourage Nathan, but I wanted the choir to be the best it could be. In the end, I encouraged him to be involved in the puppet team thinking that perhaps if he got heavily involved in that, he would decide he didn't have enough time for the choir. Now, in the end, he became a wonderful puppeteer, and I was so glad to have him as part of that group. But my idea that he would give up on music, I clearly did not know Nathan very well. One of my clearest memories of working with that music group was getting ready to do a Good Friday service at our church. And I had two of the teenage boys that were working on a duet. It was a song about the triumphal entry. And those two boys worked on this song, getting it better and better, and we were almost ready when all of a sudden, the duet turned into a trio. Without warning or explanation, those two boys had invited Nathan to join them. And I was horrified. Because I didn't want to tell Nathan, you can't do this. I was not going to do that. And so we worked at it. We worked and we worked and we worked. And with a combination of the hard work that Nathan put into it, and also a little bit of strategic work on the soundboard, we ended up with a song which really sounded very nice. Now, fast forward a few years from there, Nathan was, I think, in college, and he came home at Christmas break, and he approached me one day, and he said, Doug, I would like to sing a Christmas carol in church. I cringed just a little bit because I remembered what it was like working with Nathan in music. But I said, okay, that sounds good. And he said, and I would like you to sing harmony with me. Oh, dear. Now I was getting very concerned because I... I'd never worked with Nathan harmonizing before. It was hard enough when there was just one set of notes going, never mind two. But I told myself, well, he'll probably pick something easy, like Silent Night or Oh Come All Ye Faithful, and it will be fine. So I asked him, what do you want to sing? He smiled and said, Lo, how a rose air blooming. And I said, what? What? because that was not in the hymn book that we were using at the time, and I had no idea where he pulled this song from. I think it was a 15th or 16th century carol. He pulled out the music and showed it to me, and I was horrified. I couldn't imagine how he and I were going to work together to get this down with him singing the melody and me trying to work a harmony around it without confusing him. 
Well, it turned out all of my concern was unfounded. I very quickly realized that Nathan could carry a tune just fine. In fact, I think I struggled more with it than he did. Clearly, he had put in some time working with music since I had last seen him. I began to understand Nathan a little better through that experience. Nathan was determined. He had a dogged persistence, and he did not quit on things once he set his mind to them. In that regard, he reminded me a lot of Jesus. In Luke chapter 9, we read that Jesus recognized the time had come for his longest and most difficult journey, the journey for the last time to Jerusalem, where he knew he would be betrayed, tried, and crucified. Now, if ever there was a time to quit, to give up, to say, I've changed my mind and I'm going to do something else, that was the time. But Luke records that Jesus set his face resolutely toward Jerusalem and began the long journey. Jesus had a dogged persistence to him, and Nathan reflected that light of the Savior in his own life. I came to understand something else about Nathan, that Nathan and I had very different ideas of what it means to be best. It is my own character flaw that when I think best, I think better than everyone else. While for Nathan, best simply meant being the best he could be. While I'm focusing my attention on such absurd and impractical goals as being the best ventriloquist or the best violinist or the best preacher, Nathan was simply focusing on being better than he was last year, better than he was last month, better than he was last week, being the best that he could be. Because all he wanted was to have something to share. He reminded me of what Paul told the Ephesians, that everyone was to work with their own hands so that each would have something to share with those in need. Nathan did not work to be better than everyone else. He worked so that he would have something to share. And in that regard, too, he reminded me of Jesus. Jesus, who was relentless in his work on behalf of others, sharing his gifts of teaching and healing and forgiveness with those around him, not with the thought of being famous or powerful, but simply to have something to share. Jesus himself said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and give my life as a ransom. And may we all, like Nathan, learn the lesson of reflecting that glorious servant light in our own lives. I recently had the opportunity to preach in a church from the book of Philippians, where Paul tells the Philippians that he wants them to conduct themselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. And I told the congregation, conducting yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel means conducting your life in a way that reflects the light of our Savior in your own life. And certainly, Nathan did that. I also told them that in recent years, as I've had children of my own, I found myself thinking, the way I will recognize if somebody is conducting themselves in a manner worthy of the gospel is this. If I can point them out to my children and say, if you grow up to be like him, I will be content. And I could certainly have said that and can say that of Nathan. And frankly, on my worst days, when I forget the true meaning of being best and having something to share, I think that if I ever grow up, I want to be like Nathan too. In keeping with this, there's a wonderful verse in John chapter 7 where Jesus stands up before the crowds on the last day of the festival and he says, If anyone is hungry or thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And then he adds to that, Whoever believes in him out of his heart, his innermost being, will flow rivers 
of living water. Now, to understand what Jesus is saying there, we do need to understand that living water in that context meant water that is flowing from a source. So a stream or a spring is living water, but a puddle or a pond is not. Jesus is telling us that the work of the Holy Spirit is flowing through us. Something I think Nathan understood perhaps better than most of us is that we are not the river. We are not the stream. We are the river bed. We are merely the channel that the Holy Spirit works through. And because of that, there is no need or point in us bragging about what we have done. The riverbed does not brag. It simply allows the river to flow through. We are simply the dust of the earth, molded and formed by the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are channels only, but with his wondrous power flowing through us, he can use us every day and every hour. How I praise you, precious Savior, that your love laid hold of me. You have saved and cleansed and filled me, that I might your channel be. Channels only, blessed Master, but with all your wondrous power. Flowing through us, you can use us every day and every hour. Jesus, fill now with your Spirit, hearts that full surrender know, that the streams of living water from our inner hearts may flow. Channels only, blessed Master, but with all your wondrous power. Flowing through us, you can use us every day and every hour. I began this video with a verse of Be Thou My Vision, and I would like to end the video with the entire hymn. Kate has shared with me that this hymn was special to both her and Nathan. It was part of their wedding ceremony. And if all you knew of Nathan was what you heard in this video, you would still have no trouble understanding why this hymn is special to them. Listen to these words. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou art. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus told us, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I think a good corollary to that, which Nathan's life demonstrated to us, is this. Those who heed not the riches of this world will end up the richest of all. And those who care nothing for the empty praise of men will end up living the most praiseworthy lives of all. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. 
My King of heaven, my treasure thou art. High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy so bright, heaven's song. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler.